Let's get started in three, two, one. Let's go. Oh, I've got 28 seconds. Oh, Jesus. Oh my God. This is literally what happens when you're so short on time. Let me show you my very first plugin that I've ever created on Roblox. Alrighty, in today's video, I will be timing myself to make my very first Roblox plugin within one hour, even though I literally know nothing about creating a plugin. I was inspired by a video from Summer Equinox where he made his first plugin that randomly changes the colors of a script when you click on it. I'm watching this video and I'm realizing that I've been a Roblox developer for about eight years and I've actually never made a plugin before. So I decided to do the same, but with a twist. I will only give myself one hour to learn how to make a plugin and create my very first plugin in this video. And I also want to see if I can one-up Summer Equinox by creating a better first plugin. I'm very excited to see what I can do, so be sure to leave a like before we get started. And now, let's get straight into the video. All right, I've got Studio pulled up, and I've also got my timer right over here, so we are basically good to go. Let's get started in three, two, one. All right, let's get started. So the first thing I did was search up how to make a plugin. And from what I've heard, the official documentation for creating a plugin is actually pretty complicated for beginners. So instead, I went and followed a tutorial by my boy Cash. So nothing really too out of the ordinary. I, I basically just followed what was happening step by step to create a local plugin inside the game just to sort of understand the process of creating one, even if it's really not that useful. I managed to make a color changing plugin where when you select the parts that are inside of the game, uh, they would end up changing colors every time you clicked on the plugin inside the plugin toolbar. Uh, yep, looks like it is working as expected. Sweet. All right, I've made my very first plugin by copying somebody else, so shout out to Cash for that one. But I want to now make my own plugin. After I got the basics down, I went and looked at this really great dev forum post that teaches you how to create a plugin step by step in an easy to understand way. But what's also great is that it shows you how to create what's called a studio widget so that the plugin shows up as a panel when you click on it, and I'll explain more about this later. Now, another thing I had to consider was brainstorming what plugin I actually wanted to create. And if I'm being honest, I did come up with some ideas before the challenge started, so I didn't have to waste my time on that. What I decided to do was basically make a scripting challenges plugin, where it's like, every single day, it's gonna show up on screen uh, a new challenge for you to do. And if you do this challenge, then you can have like a complete button that you press and it'll give you like XP and put you inside of like a leaderboard reward system. Now, obviously, I won't be able to do all of this in one hour, but it just sounds like a pretty good idea to try and make a plugin based off of this. So I'm going to have to like make this a simplified version just for this video, and I might improve upon it later in the future. Next thing, of course, was the GUI itself that would be displayed when you click on the button inside the toolbar. There were a couple of things I wanted to add to this panel, like the difficulty of the scripting challenge, um, the challenge itself of course, a complete button so that you can press it whenever you complete the challenge, and an XP reward system depending on the difficulty of the challenge. So after that was done, I put the GUI inside the new widget that I created for the plugin, and now we have this beautiful panel for the plugin. So I'm pretty happy with how this plugin is turning out so far. So with the time that we have left, I want to sacrifice some of the time by quickly telling you about today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is a platform that lets you learn with thousands of interactive lessons in subjects like computer science, math, data analytics, and AI. The way you learn from Brilliant is surprisingly effective with their approach. Each lesson is filled with hands-on problem solving that lets you play with the concepts. Something important about learning is actually learning through problem solving rather than memorizing. And that's what these interactive courses allow you to do. Learning a little bit every day is also crucial to remembering the concepts. Brilliant promotes this through daily lessons, gamification, and even leaderboards to keep you coming back to learn more. Some of the content I think you'll love are their interactive programming courses like Programming with Python, which specializes in teaching you how to code in one of the most in-demand programming languages in the world, but also in a fun, interactive way. And you're able to do all of this directly from your browser. Go ahead and try Brilliant for free by clicking the first link in the description or visit brilliant.org slash brawldev for a full 30 days. And if you like it, you can get a 20% off annual premium subscription using my link. Thanks again to Brilliant for the sponsorship. And now back to the video. So with half the time we had left, I wanted to add a couple of features to this plugin. The first thing I wanted to add was a table full of challenges and have the plugin pick a random challenge from that table to display onto the panel. 
I decided to use a module script for this, and I needed to give information, like the difficulty of the challenge, and also the challenge itself. But, instead of coming up with my own challenges, I decided to be a little sneaky just to save me some time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my challenges channel inside of my Discord server, and I'm just going to take some of these and put it inside of the script. So, uh, which by the way, you should join my Discord server by the way, like it's a fun time in here. This is a pretty good one, so I'm going to make this an easy one, and then I'm just going to copy the task and then put it in here. So without spending too much time, I took about eight to nine challenges from my Discord server and put it inside of my challenges table for this video. Now, I do want to thank uh, everybody who made these challenges inside of my Discord server, and I'm totally not just saying this because that gives me the excuse to steal your challenges and put it inside of my plugin. Please do not kill me after you watch this video, and that is basically all I ask. You are helping me a lot by saving me some time without thinking about these challenges for myself, so that is a little something I wanted to acknowledge before we move on to whatever it is that I need to complete for this challenge. Um, okay, but it looks like every time that I back out of it and then press it again, then it's going to change the challenge, so it looks like it is working basically as expected. I decided that right now, when you press the complete button, a window shows up telling you to come back tomorrow for a new challenge. Now, the problem I'm facing here is being able to wait every passing day to update the challenge legitimately. Unless I did a bit of research and trial and error, this would have taken too much time to do. So I just decided to use an arbitrary timer that waits a certain amount of seconds inside Roblox Studio before it refreshes the panel and picks out a new challenge. But it's kind of pointless because the timer only goes down while Studio is running and the timer restarts if I restart Studio as well. At this point, I was very short on time, but I was missing one last key element and that was having a leaderboard. Now, I could have done this using some sort of cloud storage system to store everyone's XP and have a leaderboard for people with the most XP. But I was panicking with how little time I had left, so I just used Roblox's basic data store service only to realize in the end, it doesn't make sense to have it like this, because Roblox's data store system is independent for each game that accesses it. So if another user downloaded this plugin and used it in their own game, the leaderboard would only be for their game specifically, and it's not a shared global leaderboard at this point. So I'll basically just leave it as is, and you can just watch me struggle during these last few minutes that I have. Attempt to prof Oh, I've got 28 seconds. Oh, Jesus. Uh, perform arithmetic add on nil a number. Oh, okay, well, there goes my timer. Okay, gonna have to like fix this up. I'm gonna have to like fix this up. Oh, bro. Oh my god, this is literally what happens when you're so short on time. I forgot that there's increment async. What am I doing, bro? Uh, this is a little past the time, so I'm kind of cheating, but like, whatever. Uh, okay, so let me show you my very first plugin that I've ever created on Roblox. <laughs> this is about to be so scuffed, bro. If we go to plugins, you can see that there's a very lovely plugin here. It's called a side quest. It's got a very lovely blue script icon here as well that I totally created. So let's see what happens if we click on it. So if it's going to show this beautiful widget on the left side of the screen and the challenge is make a module script that can make a certain part make a sound when touched. Now, I totally came up with this idea. I did not take it from uh, whoever made this challenge inside my Discord server. But because we have that, uh, the reward is 100 XP because the difficulty is medium. So if we were to, let's say, go inside of a script and if I were to just code up something stupid, then I can basically hit complete and then it's going to say, check back tomorrow for a new challenge. So if you complete a challenge, then um, you basically go up higher in the leaderboard with the side quest leaderboard data store. So that is basically um, my plugin that I created. So that's basically the end of the challenge. If for whatever reason you want to take this challenge and improve it, I'll leave a link somewhere for you to download this plugin and use it for yourself to potentially make it a better plugin. I'm also interested to know what plugins you use in Roblox Studio that have helped you to make your games in the comment section of this video. This was a fun challenge to do, and I'm glad I was finally able to make my first ever plugin in Roblox Studio, so that'll conclude for today. Click here to watch this video, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.